Uh, hello everyone, I am Mania and I am third year PhD student at Northeastern. Uh, and I'm Golsana and I'm second year PhD student at Boston University. And today we are talking about workflow motif, a powerful abstraction for debugging distributed system. This is a joint work between Northeastern, BU and MOC. Today distributed applications are largely high scale and also very complex. And what makes us to be able to build such complex system is abstraction. And what abstraction is do is hiding complexity of the lower layers and also enable developers to build distributed systems out of less complex ones. Examples of abstractions are development APIs that let developers to build distributed systems from different distributed systems, from other distributed systems, and also libraries which help developers to implement commonly used codes and reuse the previous code. But when it comes to debugging, the de facto approach to debugging is no abstraction. Is no abstraction. We just throw engineers logs of distributed systems and ask them to deal with it. We believe that this extreme mismatch between building distributed systems versus having no abstraction for debugging them is key reason why debugging is so challenging and 50% of, of engineers time is spending for debugging system. In this research, we are exploring a novel diagnosis tools for, the, for distributed systems called workflow motifs. Workflow motifs describe request processing pattern in workflow of how request is processed by distributed system along with their dis performance characteristics. Workflow motifs are building blocks of distributed system runtime behavior. Just like DNAs, different permutation of DNAs that, that builds chromosomes, different permutation of workflow motifs build our distributed system behavior. Examples of workflow motifs are work done for writing data to a storage node or the work done to elect leader in leader election protocols and consensus protocols. And how workflow motives let us to do this is by first of all hiding the complexity of irrelevant log events from the system and also by let engineers to understand the behavior of their system. As you can see in the figure of the right, this is a very, very simple write request, which consists of the work done for writing data to the cache and then the work done for writing data to the back in the storage. Golsana will continue with an example of workflow motives. To make, to make the concept of workflow motive as Mania described more concrete, I want to talk about a very simplified version of write request workflow in one distributed system similar to Ceph. It consists of some work done in the client side in orange and some work done in the storage nodes in green. When the client sends a write request, it first accesses the metadata server to look up the information of the location of file data in storage nodes. And then it uh, look up the user permission. Then the uh, client uh, sends a write command to the storage side. And because this is three-way write replication, you can see some repeated processing pattern to write in three different storage nodes. And when the response is ready, it is sent back to the client. Now, by applying workflow motif, we expect two motifs here. The first motif labeled three-way replication in the storage side. And maybe you are going to ask me why we expect this as one motif. Because it is repeated across many uh, write requests and also across those types of requests that write data. Uh, for example, background work to clean data from cache. And the second motif in the client side is even more interesting because it shows up not only among write requests, but also among many types of requests in distributed storage, such as list and read. 
Now it's time to drill into why we think workflow motif is really useful. Mania is going to talk about the use cases. We think of different use cases for workflow motifs. One of them is compare and contrast different executions over the time. Imagine that you have execution workflows from yesterday, that system was working perfectly. And then we have execution workflows from today, that system doesn't work perfectly. We can extract, for both of these executions, we can extract the frequent patterns and frequent workflows and compare these frequent patterns together. And then we can help engineers to find out and extract their problem. The other thing is that we can improve the slow performance of distributed system by finding frequent patterns that are slow among other patterns. And these frequent patterns, by improving these frequent patterns, these are slow ones, we can improve many, many requests. The other thing is that we can flag anomalies by finding frequent patterns that are happening usually together. And if they don't happen together, this means that there is an anomaly within our system. And the other thing is reveal emergent behavior, which means that some patterns that shouldn't happen together happens together. And this is another type of anomaly that we can, we can find out with these uh, frequent patterns. There are some ways to capture workflow requests in distributed system. And one of them is end-to-end -end tracing that is our key enabler. As Lily and Emre mentioned in the previous talk, End-to-end -end tracing is a way of capturing how each individual request is processed among and within different components of distributed systems. Tracing infrastructure attaches a unique ID to each request and propagates it uh, with the request while it is executed by the system. And also, executed logs are stored into disk and are tagged uh, with the ID, and later, those logs that have, the, uh, that have the same ID are stitched together and make traces which are directed as cyclic graphs or DAGs. In such DAGs, nodes are trace points or are log information, and uh, the edges represent the lat latency and causal relationship between nodes. All those workflows that Mania and I were talking about are captured using end-to-end -end tracing. There are many approaches to extract subgraphs, uh, but now we are initially focusing on frequent subgraph mining algorithms, which are powerful tools and are widely used uh, in the world of biology and chemistry for DNA and component matching. Example of these algorithms are Gaston and Pathy. These algorithms try to find the smallest frequent pattern and expand them by one node and determine whether uh, these larger patterns are still frequent or not. As an example, here in this slide, you can see these large graphs consist of these two patterns, which we found them using uh, these algorithms. This work is really new. We started it recently, and what is done so far is uh, adding end-to-end -end tracing infrastructure to self-distributed storage it took us five months, and it was really hard and also painful. But now uh, we can say that we capture complex enough traces, and we can use them now. And also, we explore different subgraph mining algorithms by using them to extract different uh, subgraph with different size from some distributed storage. Of course, there are still some research questions that need to be considered. Uh, such as how can we modify these subgraph mining algorithms to suit our domain specific needs? Or uh, what are other approaches um, that can help us to identify these motifs? Uh, what properties tracing infrastructure can have uh, to help us for this work? And what are other use cases that we can apply this workflow motif to? Uh, we will present this work in poster session, and we would be glad uh, to get your feedback there. Thank you.